Uh, we're going to do a seascape in, um, in acrylics. Sunday fun day. So let me show you what I'm painting. Okay. I took this uh, picture when we had a family um, vacation down in Naples. So uh, I decided, well, today's a good day. Uh, it's going to be raining outside. It's humid. We're down here in South Florida. So we're going to do this painting for you. So let me show you my palette. <clears throat> now, it's going to be hard to have my palette here. So I'm just going to show it to you. I'm just going to tell you the colors I'm going to be mixing. So we got cad yellow, medium, yellow ochre, alizarin crimson, uh, cerulean blue, ultramarine blue, burnt sienna, titanium white, and uh, chromium oxide green. It's an opaque green. Not sure if I'm really going to need it, but um, what the heck. So let's start. Okay, so now let me just start off with the quick drawing of where things are going to be. Uh, let me probably use some blue here. So I have, uh, let's start to draw our horizon. Our horizon is going to be about right here. The sea is going to be about right here. Uh, we're going to have the sea grapes. For all those who are Floridian, you know what sea grapes are. Tree goes all the way down. Like this. There is another set of bushes. Right around here. And then there's like a little hill. Right here. And just like that. Something of sort. Maybe the horizon line is a little bit lower. Let me make that a mental note. Yeah, we're gonna make it that that small. We're gonna do something like like this. Some burst of clouds coming up this way. Something like that. All right, let's start. Okay, okay, so first what I'm gonna do is start out with my darks, which um, I'm gonna start out with ultramarine blue. And burnt sienna. Now, for those of you who are just joining me, who are just joined my page, uh, most already know I paint a very impressionistic style, which is we leave out a lot of details. We just go straight for uh, representation more than, you know, an accurate painting. It's not what I'm all about here. So I'm mixing some ultramarine blue and I've just added some CAD yellow medium to this and I'm just varying my tones maybe a little bit of alizarin crimson make some dark greens color looks a little bit muddy but that's okay I want to gray down there Acryl you gotta remember acrylics acrylics is not a medium that covers as well as oils bear that in mind so if you don't have so if it's not you know dark on a first pass don't get all frustrated about it the nature of acrylics all right now let me make some darks here as well i'm going to use some alizarin crimson ultramarine blue you know
Okay, you're thinking, well, this is all purple. It's not really dark. Yep, you're right. Because um, eventually I'm going to go back over this. Uh, like I said, acrylics, you need multiple stage, unlike oil, to do your painting. Now, I could have gotten this darker. Some people would have used probably black. Don't ever use black. Please don't. Um, stay with your primary. If you want to make a dark color, use ultramarine blue, yellow, and red together, and you will get a dark color. Promise. But the thing, the beauty about acrylics is doing it in steps, okay? It's the fact that you could do it in layers. Uh, and... It, is, it will be advantageous to leave some of these parts clear as they are, okay? Transparent, not clear, transparent as they are where you can see some of the background showing through. It will be advantageous to you later on throughout the painting, you will see, because now I can actually go back and add darker darks and not work too hard, work too hard to make highlights. And on top of that, it will allow me to make, you know, um, very impressionistic style, you know, of flowers or leaves and stuff like that. And I'm telling you this ahead of time because you will see uh, eventually as the painting progresses what I am talking about. I'm just letting you know ahead of time. So um, let's, uh, I'm just, right now my main objective is to cover the canvas, okay? Do I ever tone my canvas? Uh, sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. I'm... 90% of the time, I don't, especially when I'm doing acrylics, because acrylics don't cover as well as oil. And when I say cover, is meaning if I put this color down uh, with acrylic, I would have to put a thick amount of paint to cover this color. If I did this in oils, uh, oils will be able to cover in one shot what I just did here. Okay, that's what I mean by being able to cover. So keep that in mind. And uh, you could do the same thing with oils, all right? So let me start blabbing and uh, let me cover this whole um, canvas. So let's work a little bit on the clouds. I just want to get the main. So I'm going to make kind of a grayish blue. And the way I'm doing that is I'm using ultramarine blue, yellow ochre, and alizarin crimson, okay? So that should give me like a grayed down blue. And you probably wonder why do I want a muted blue? It's because if I put any kind of highlights over this, they will stand out, okay? That's why. Just sticking, add more water. If you find your paints are sticking, add more water. I'm using heavy body acrylics, so hence why it's going to be a little bit harder to move the paint versus if I was using fluid acrylics. Okay, and you might say, wow, this is pretty dark. It is initially, but we're going to go over this with lighter colors. So now I just added more white to this mix that I have here just to make a gradients. Maybe a little bit of yellow ochre now to that same color and more white. What I'm doing right now is setting up a road map of where this painting is going to go eventually. Now remember this is only the first layer. Okay. I know I know it looks pretty gray as far as the colors go. But once you start adding in the other colors, um uh, everything will come to light for you. Okay. Cerulean blue to finish the rest over here is there. So now I'm gonna use some cerulean blue to finish the rest over here and then we're gonna do the water and the average color for the sand and then we'll work from there have cerulean blue. have cerulean blue 
mixed with a little bit of ultramarine blue white maybe a hint of burnt sienna let me see how that's gonna look perfect so cerulean blue a lot of it a little bit of white a, a tiny I don't know if you guys can see this. You see that? This is about as much uh, burnt sienna that I'm putting into the blue, into that mixture, and a lot of white. What that does is grays down that cerulean blue a little bit and bring it down to the approximate value of this, the lighter part of this cloud. Because I don't want it too, too strong as color. And you notice I'm not being too careful here, right? I'm just plopping down colors. All right. I'm just going back over what I did. It's okay. Because it's going to need a second coat anyway. i mix it over here while it's still wet. That, let's make the horizon a little bit darker. i mix it over here while it's still wet. I just, like I said, added a little bit of cerulean blue. Ah, oh, that's ultramarine blue. Okay. We're going to leave that alone for a few minutes. It's a little bit tacky, so it's almost setting up. Good. Plus a little bit of yellow ochre. This color. Plus a little bit of yellow ochre. Yellow medium. Uh, let me go a little bit yellow. Cad yellow medium do that horizon it's better all right let's just do that horizon this is um you might be at wondering where is this a picture of or what's the location of this it's um in naples florida where I'm located. And this was a Vanderbilt or Delanor uh, Wiggins Beach. Some of you are familiar, some of, some of you actually have been there. Uh, a little bit tricky. The sand is already of a light color, so I'm really gonna have to describe the sand. So you're probably wondering, well, how am I gonna go about this? So I'm gonna have to lay down uh, kind of a dark base in order for you to see the highlight. So what is that dark base going to consist of? Well, I'm going to go with a lot of white. Tiny hint of ultramarine blue and a tiny hint of burnt sienna. So let me show you what that looks like. This is basically the color right here. I don't know if it's showing up very good, but it makes it almost like a grayish pink. Maybe, let me see. Actually, I need to go a little bit darker. That was too light. It would never show. Okay, I could work with that. I added a little bit more burnt sienna to that. So basically ultramarine blue and a little bit of burnt sienna to make that sand color. So, there's many ways to describe a light color in a painting through its surrounding colors. All right, it's either going to work or it's not. We're going to find out soon enough.
Okay. All right. Now we got the canvas covered. Let's start working on this side of the tree first. Now I'm going to put like the mid-tones and add some of the darks. I'm not going to go to the highlights right away, okay? We're just going to add the darks and um, and then after I'll work on the sky and just poke through those trees a little bit. We're going to sculpt it. Yeah, it's pretty much dry. All right, so I'm going to make some dark greens here. So I'm going to go ultramarine blue, a little bit of alizarin, and a tiny bit of yellow. That should give me a dark green. If I really want a darker green, uh, I can actually use some Let's see if I have some phthalo somewhere. Ooh, look what we have here. Phthalo blue from Sienna. Look at the difference here. Phthalo blue, a little bit of alizarin crimson and some yellow. That should give me a nice dark green. And you could actually even use phthalo blue and uh, burnt Sienna. Look at the difference here. That's really green. Ooh, let's use some red to that. And when I say red, use alizarin crimson. You see the difference in greens here? So, makes it like a darker. And more crimson. Just just there you go. There's some ooh, that's not mid tones. Mid tones as well. There's some ooh, that's not mid tone, that's dark as hell. So I'm gonna use some chromium chromium oxide green and some alizarin crimson, which, which will make like a brownish. Very like muddied green, which I'm fine with. Add a little bit yellow because I want some of these colors to be kind of muted. I'm just trying to follow a pattern here afterwards okay all right we'll describe this a little bit more afterwards let's see let's see really mute this down a little bit more Okay. Same mix that I used here. Go here. Even though. And it's okay if some of that purple pops through. All right. Maybe add some cerulean and a little bit of add yellow into that mix I'm using a whole lot of different kind of greens here even though they're really dull it's really what I want I want the colors to be a little bit dull because 
when it comes to the highlights, you'll see what I'm talking about soon enough for this. Let me see if this is going to be this. Let me see if this is going to be... Yeah, that works. There's a shadow of this plant here. And to describe the landscape that this is going to be like somewhat of a little mound that goes like this, I'm going to follow the contour. Even though this looks pretty 2D, you could make a 2D object look 3D, okay? Just by the way you direct your strokes and where you put. So like this, see? Now I make it look like it's a mound and this is like a flat area. I'm just guiding you with the with the stroke of my brush okay so just like that and there's more of a shadow here as well okay let me see where else can we have a shadow um i think this picture was taken around noon one o'clock somewhere like that okay okie turkey now we got that we're gonna leave it alone for now let it dry let's start adding a little bit more detail to the clouds all right so now I'm going to actually work on the highlights a little bit more on that effect and then work my way down and add where it needs to be. The cloud is usually going to be the part where it's going to be a little bit more. Um, the cloud is where it's going to be a little bit more intricate on and it's going to, where it's going to take a lot more of your time because you, you really have to try and build up these uh, colors and build this cloud the way you like it to be. Let me see, maybe add a little bit of yellow. So I'm using a little bit of yellow ochre and white. Those are going to be my highlights. So let's see what I can do. Yeah, that works. So... I'm just going approximate here. Approximately where most of the highlights are and I can build this up and rework it later. Mm -hmm. So right now I'm just trying to put some of the lights where I think they're needed. And you will see how we're gonna build this up. How we're gonna shape this. Okay. I'm just adding a little bit of blue and a tiny. And maybe that same color that I just put down, that same mix, I'm just adding a little bit of blue and a tiny hint of burnt sienna. And I'm going, you know, making transition color where right under these highlights, just trying to build up the colors. And then when I, we add the colors here, we're going to furthermore sculpt this cloud. So that's why I said it's a little bit, the, the cloud system is usually what takes a little bit longer time, especially in acrylics, because you don't have that same blendability as oils, you gotta make like transition color over transition color. But I mean, you know, take your time with this. You're not in a, in a hurry. Although I like to paint fast, but sometimes, you know, it's worth just taking a little bit of time. And you, as you can see, I'm letting some of the base color of that purple show through later on in a, comments if you have answer it to you uh answer it to you i will answer it for you later on in uh 
comments if you have one. Let me add a hint of phthalo blue. All right, so now I just added for the darker areas, I added for this color, ultramarine blue, a pinch of alizarin crimson, a pinch of uh, phthalo blue to make this dark system. I might even go a little bit darker here. Palette, you could harmonize the whole entire painting because everything will work. And sim palette, you could harmonize the whole entire painting because everything will work and symphony. And remember, when you're working with acrylics, your colors will dry darker. Okay. Now let me go ahead and add a little bit of white to that mix to make a little transition while it's still wet. It's called the ugly stage. Roadmap of how I want the painting to be, you know, and then uh, I finish. An you gotta expect this kind of choppiness unless you put in a retarder and then you're gonna uh, get frustrated because the paint's not drying fast enough. So, I mean, it kind of cut, cuts both ways. If you're working with acrylic, there's a reason. And it's most likely that reason is because you want the paint uh, to dry fast enough for you to layer on. Sometimes I start off my oil paintings in acrylics. You know, make myself a little roadmap of how I want the painting to be, you know, and then uh, I finish an oil. That's happened many times. All right. So now you can see the values here and here are about the same. You can't, you cannot tell too much the difference in uh, uh, colors because they're about the same lightness or darkness when I say value. So most likely I'm going to make this maybe a little bit darker. Okay, because I don't want the clouds to be too dark. So let me show you what I mean by that. Sometimes it's just best to demonstrate. Oh, don't be able, don't be afraid to test your, don't be able, don't, don't be able, don't be afraid to test your colors against what you already have. And don't be afraid to mess up the painting, okay? It's part of the process of learning one and two um you you how should i say uh you train your memory your, your main memory muscles to what works and what doesn't work due to previous paintings and previous things that you've done in the past uh your brain will memorize and say hey we've tried this before uh it didn't work buddy try something different and then that's how you eventually learn what works and what doesn't. And I'm letting some of this color that I had initially come through a little bit. And I'm going through making these little sky holes through the clouds. It's starting to shape up to something. Um, Let's do that here too. Actually, let me go right through the bottom here. And I'm mixing some darker blues. There you go, just almost like dry brushing here is what I'm doing, just dry brushing some of this blue 
into the clouds. Okay. Sometimes a little bit too dry. And we'll, we'll rework that water. I'm not too concerned about it. Make this mix that I'm applying right now over what I just did. Like I told you, under that clouds, I use some cerulean blue here and ultramarine blue to make this mix that I'm applying right now over what I just did. Like I told you, clouds are a little bit tedious, especially when you do it in acrylics. Sometimes it works and sometimes you just make some happy mistakes. And it's like, ooh, this actually really worked. Let me... I'm almost like dry brushing here, just go, going over some of the stuff that I did. All right. And this could get a little bit tedious. <clears throat> but it's, it's coming out. It's going to come out. Let me see. Uh, let me get this flat brush. Let me put some white. A little bit of sienna, a little bit of ultramarine blue. If I don't like the way this painting turns out, guess what I'm going to do? I'm just going to take my oil paints and go right over what I did. I could paint oil over acrylic and not the other way around. Let's add some alizarin crimson to this. These low hanging clouds. My brush is kind of damp. So, and I'm just like doing like these sweeping strokes like this, okay? Short of being right next to me is the best way I can describe it. This, there you go. Basically, it's almost like glazing. All right, some yellow, some white. Yellow, some white. Maybe a little bit of burnt sienna. game here one another small one in the back another one right here there you go cell boats okay now for the fun stuff, let's do the trees. So now I'm gonna use this color that I did here for the sky to make some sky holes. So I'm gonna use some cerulean blue, a little bit of ultramarine blue, a little bit of burnt sienna, white, and let's make some sky holes. Make it look like 
you can peer right through these trees here. There you go, just like that. And a few here. Let's do another small ones here. And right here. Take the edge off. There you go. Maybe one right here. That's what you call sky holes. Okay. Let's start working on some mid-tones and perhaps some highlights on this side and then we'll finish off with this side. I'm gonna try to work quick. I know you guys got things to do. And a little bit of yellow ochre. Let's make some. Let's make some. Individual. Not everywhere, just, just where on your photograph you see some of the highlights. And remember what I told you. Um, when you paint an acrylic, what you lay down is going to darken. So make sure to compensate for that. More yellow, perhaps. vary your greens and you don't want to make the whole entire thing green and look at the another important thing is when you're doing plants like this uh, just look at the direction of the leaves are you know some are going to go down some pointing up Varia greens here. I'm just adding a little bit of phthalo blue. And I'm adding, I'm going to introduce some reds. Dark ones there. Some stragglers that are hitting on. Dark ones there. Some stragglers that are hitting out into the park by themselves here. I'm using kind of thick paint. And you see nothing is really in detail here. I'm going between the cad yellow medium. I'm adding a little bit of lizard and crimson here and there. Uh, I'm varying my mix. All my mix of greens are all right here. I'm going back and forth adding, you know, uh, different blues and different yellows. Like I'm going between the yellow ochre. I'm going between the cad yellow medium. I'm adding a little bit of lizard and crimson here and there. Uh, these are bas basically the leaves from um, the sea grape. So I'm just making bigger, bigger leaves. I 
Had yellow ochre, maybe a little bit of red. Some of these leaves are, you know, if anybody ever seen a sea grape tree, uh, there's some orange colors in there. That's as sienna, a lot of yellow. There you go. Some highlights. Because these are in shadows, uh, I'm not going to give them too much uh, too much attention here. Just wherever. Okay, we're not going to go overboard. Put some of these leaves in shadows. A little bit everywhere. There, there you go. There, there too. Uh, let's define that a little bit. Some here. Add, let's add a little bit of cerulean blue to that mix. So let's work on some. I'm using chromium oxide green and yellow ochre. And notice I'm leaving some of this grayed out green in the back here, just come through. Okay, because I don't want to cover everything with and make like, you know, one, one um, monochromatic color. So now I'm adding some cad yellow. That's for that tree there. Some here. Let's add a little bit of cerulean blue to that mix. Change it up a little bit. Add a little bit of crimson. Beautiful highlight. Maybe add a little bit of sienna to warm. Beautiful highlight. Maybe add a little bit of sienna to warm. Warm some of this up. <clears throat> doing what it's supposed to. So let me change brushes here. Uh, let's use this bad boy here. Give this some volume, show some. I'll be a little bit Thalo blue and white. Okay. And we're going to add some more highlights. So let's do that. Some cad yellow, phthalo blue and white that's a little bit too bright yellow let me add some warmth to that actually a little bit more sienna that's what i'm using is burnt sienna to to warm up that yellow there you go for the edge of these trees that I did here, remember? There you go, just like that. Some here. Try to give these leaves direction, okay? Alright. 
some that are going up into the sky. Let me put more green. Using the corner, going down, wiping some of this off. Really light touch, okay? Don't put too much pressure on this. Light touch. Let some of that background colors come through. Now I'm just going upstroke. Now I'm just going upstroke. There's some here as well. A little bit of cad yellow and white. And I'm using my round brush. Let's cad yellow and white. And I'm using my round brush. Let's do some here. There you go. All right. I'm gonna try and make it even better. Uh, let's sculpt the sand out a little bit. So I'm gonna make the lightest part of the sand, the lightest part of the sand really in this general area. So let me use my small um, filbert. A lot of white, a little bit of yellow ochre. Maybe a little bit of cad yellow medium and a lot of white. Let me show you. Right here. That's the mixture I'm making right here. Wet your brush a little bit. And this is a number two filbert. So let's see what kind of That's the money shot. There you go. There you go. I'm glad I put down that that sand a little bit darker than what I initially thought I didn't need it. So now I'm dry brushing as I'm going down the beach. I'm not wetting my brush. If I may wet my brush, then all this would be like more uh, of a uniform. Let's break up that mass as if you can see through these plants a little bit. Okay, so now I'm going to make some more grasses here in a minute, but let me just... I'm just dry brushing again continuously. Maybe I might add a little bit of water. It's starting to dry up on me. There you go. And notice the direction I'm brushing it this way because remember, this is a little sand hill that I did. And I'm gonna let this um, dark here on the top of the hill. Because now you'll see a variation that this is light and this is gonna be a little bit dark. 
And to make it a, um, a flatter plane, I'm actually going to go through here as well, through what I did. More white, maybe a hint of ultramarine blue to that mix. Right? I want like a like um, really um, um, toned down kind of white, not really bright here. And let me make like a little pathway through that. There you go. Some in the back as if you could walk through there. Just, you know, make this uneven. You don't want this to be all one even path. I see a lot of people do that. They When they do grasses, then everything just looks like either one straight line or one straight curved line. It's too symmetrical. And you, if you look at nature, that, 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 does, that does not happen. Symmetrics, you know, it just doesn't happen. Trust me, so just go in there, just put like these little sand pits, you know, just here and there. Just tell people, oh, look, there's like, there you go, just like that. There's movement in here. There. And actually, let me make... a little bit darker that sand hill there you go just like that I just took a little bit of uh, ultramarine blue a little bit of burnt sienna and I made like a little glaze and I'm just like barely just like brushing so I'm just using a glazing technique right now. This is what I'm doing. So now you can see there's a little bit of an edge. And I'm going to add a little bit more water to my brush. And let me continue glazing just like that. Give it texture. There you go. Just like that. Let me go up to here. There. Perfect. I'm happy now. All right. Let me put some more grasses here. Uh, there you go just like that I'm just going over that blue doesn't matter it's going to mix together visually some more of these grasses all I did was this mix that I have here I still have it on my palette I wet it down a little bit to use like a glaze it's very let me show it to you so you can understand this is what I was using to make some of the grasses on this part of the tree. So there's still some left and I'm putting a lot of water. And I'm just like barely like touching and just making like little C strokes. Just give it a notion of, you know, some grasses. Maybe let me see, add a little bit of blue to that mix just to darken some of these grasses up a little bit. There you go, just like that, just like that. There you go. Money shot. All right, so now mm, I see, where's my liner brush? I'm gonna use my liner brush. I'm gonna make some uh, sea oats. Very touch. Very light touch. You're basically caressing the canvas texture here. I'm adding a little bit of yellow to this chromium. What I did was use just 
on top of what I already did. Give it some more visual texture here. I'm adding a little bit of yellow to this chromium. What I did was use just chromium oxide green. There you go. That looks about right. Let's do some here too. Actually make... There you go. That looks about right. Let's do some here too. Actually make it a little bit darker. The brush is really wet. Otherwise you won't get thin lines. That's not actually in the picture, but we're just adding it. Nobody says you can't. It's your painting. Do what you want. More branches here. There you go. So now I'm just gonna sign my name. View this video as much as you'd like for it. There you go. Let me bring it up closer for you. or anything about the colors. Oh, this was an 8x10 stretch canvas, by the way. Uh, let me know. Leave it in comments. I'm pretty prompt about answering questions, and I will help you out as much as I can.